What is up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Not So Stupid Podcast. Today, we're going to be breaking down three major keys to every successful diet. And these are going to be really important because right now, there is a really alarming stat that a lot of scientists or anti-dieters are promoting, and that is that 90% of diets fail, so why bother dieting? You're better off not dieting, which I think is a really ridiculous conclusion to come to. And I think that it's not the idea of dieting that's flawed, but how people diet that is flawed because diets, in essence, how they've been marketed are all designed to be temporary. Um, And how they defined failure was that, again, uh, 90% of diets fail because the people that go through diets either never lose the weight or regain the weight. And they never, um, they don't maintain the weight that they lose. And that is obviously not what you want when you go on a diet. You know, you don't go on a diet so that you can inevitably gain weight. You ideally, and I hope, would go on a diet so that you can lose weight and keep the weight off. Um, so we're here at Stupid Fit to challenge that kind of notion that diets are flawed or are failures and actually helping you understand how you can lose fat and keep that off effectively. And there are three major things that I think everyone can learn from dieting um, or everyone can implement in dieting to be successful. The first one is flexibility. I think for a lot of popular diets, they focus very heavily on restriction. And to a degree, you're going to need restriction. You're going to need to manage your calories, right? To to a certain extent. Um, But that is a short-sighted approach because you don't learn how to eat. You just learn how to restrict because you don't learn how to eat, you don't know how to handle different situations. If you don't know how to enjoy carbs or enjoy sweets or enjoy desserts or enjoy uh, salty foods or fatty foods, if you don't know how to enjoy those in moderation and balance the rest of your day out accordingly to enjoy those foods, once you're done dieting, you're going to go back to your old habits. You're going to overindulge. You're going to binge the way you used to because that's that's what you know. You didn't unlearn that behavior and you didn't relearn or you didn't learn new behaviors to help with uh, facilitating balancing this in your real life. So a certain degree of flexibility is important in every diet. The degree to which you're flexible will vary from person to person. It's gonna work differently for each person. But having flexibility is I think a fundamental aspect of a successful diet because without that, You don't learn balance. You don't learn how to eat. You don't learn how to um, approach different situations or, or, uh, and you won't have the tools necessary to equip yourself to uh, go on the rest of your life um, without gaining the weight back. So flexibility, I think is really, really important. So, and uh, I, I don't know if I define flexibility, but that's the idea of being able to have the foods you enjoy and like that might not be quote unquote healthy, but help you, um, you know, feel good, help you in social situations, help you um, maybe with your mental health or satisfy craving or whatever. Um, but that can't be understated enough. So having flexibility is key. The degree of flexibility will vary, like I said, but having it is important. And I think the next thing is um, planning slash education, which in and of themselves are two different things, but I think are related Uh, in a lot of ways and I think the one way they're related is that when you know what to plan for you can be a lot more successful so I think when a lot of people hear planning they think of meal prepping they think of um, a a fridge full of Tupperwares of cold food that they don't like the taste of right I think that's where most people go but it doesn't have to be like that that's just one way to plan your food And another way you can plan your food is just having foods that are packaged, that are simple ingredients, that are going to have high nutrient density, that are uh, highly satiating, they keep you full for long periods of time. And they can be prepped pretty easily, or uh, prepared, cooked pretty easily for you to eat right there and then. That could be snack bars, protein bars, um, sandwiches, uh, deli meats. Those are all good options that you don't need to meal prep in advance, and you can eat (laughs) whenever you want and enjoy them. Um, But knowing that you're going to have one of your meals come from those foods and it's going to give you x amount of protein x amount of calories helps with managing the rest of your day if you know i i'm against meal plans because it doesn't teach you how to eat but having go-to meals and um 
guidelines to follow for each meal can help you be successful in the short term and the long term. Having go-to meals so that you don't have to guess and fumble around and waste too much energy trying to put together a meal that might end up being too many calories or not enough protein and you end up falling behind can help you be a lot more successful. And that starts with education. So that's why I think these two are related. Knowing what kind of foods to have on a meal by meal basis. Um, generally speaking, that's gonna be protein in color, protein fiber, for the most part, serving fruit, serving of vegetables. Um, how much of it to have. And then again, aiming for maybe 20 to 25 plus grams of protein, three to eight grams of fiber, depending on the person, depending on what kind of vegetables you're eating. And knowing where uh, you can get those and how to have those prepared really easily or at least know how to um, again how to get those but in a broader sense where to get them from or how to have them prepared for you or having backup plans if those things don't go as needed is what leads to a successful diet because regardless of the situation you know because you're educated and you know what's going to be work good well for you um, what, where those things are going to be coming from and how to stay on track and keep you on your goals. So planning and education is the second thing. And I think the last thing is accountability. And I think accountability is the key for success in any endeavor that you go through. And accountability has a lot of different forms. There is public accountability when you announce to a group of people, to your social media following, to your class, to your coworkers, that you're going on a diet. Uh, that is a lot of pressure to make sure that you follow through and do what you need to do. And I think like if you think back to a moment where you told someone you're going to do something and you didn't feel like doing that thing, but you ended up doing it anyway because you told someone you're going to do it. It's kind of the same idea. You want to be held accountable to follow through with that idea and just telling people, telling a, a group of people, telling, posting on social media that you're going on a diet today and you're going to lose this much weight can uh be extremely beneficial for you or even having um, another form of accountability is having accountability partners so where you go through the same journey with somebody else having a friend that is also trying to lose weight and maybe even making a nice friendly competition out of it having uh, wagers or having um, you know get togethers where you maybe prepare or plan your food grocery shop together go on workouts together you know all of those things are forms of accountability for you to consistently execute the things you need to do. Um, uh, and that kind of leads to another form of group accountability, right? There's an overlap here where if you go to workout classes, if you're starting off in workout classes, you created a community that is helping you um, stay motivated and stay driven and stay active to, uh, again, burn calories, work out, get moving, get a sweat going, all of that kind of stuff. And the final form of accountability is just professional accountability, getting a coach, getting a dietitian, getting a nutritionist, getting a trainer, um, any of those things, someone that you value, someone whose opinion is important to you and someone who um, you will uh, be disappointed if you let down. Uh, that I couldn't figure out how to put that into words. But if you were to not follow through with this, you would be disappointed in yourself. You would be let down with yourself. That's the kind of person you um, want to work with. And likewise, putting in an investment, putting your money where your mouth is, essentially, is going. it really puts people to put in the action. Because once something is on the line, you know, you're, again, more likely to follow through. You're going to want to put in the effort, even on days you don't feel like putting in the effort. And that kind of goes back to the public accountability. If you're tweeting out to all of your Twitter followers, if you're posting a picture on your story um, on Instagram and everyone, you had hundreds of people watch it, that you're going on a diet and you're going to do this, um, people are going to remember that. And that's going to pressure you to do it. And likewise, putting money, your, repu your reputation is on the line for that. Likewise, putting money on the line is the same kind of idea. You're going to lose something if you don't follow through with this. And that's just going to push you to actually follow through and complete it or at least get started with it. Right? You, don't, you might not need accountability the entire way, but there are going to be points throughout your journey where accountability is extremely helpful. And without that, you're going to only become a statistic that is plaguing the world and leading scientists and researchers to think that dieting is useless. So um, highly encourage you to audit and reflect on your current strategy, on what you're currently doing. Do you have these three things in place 
for the diet that you're doing or for the diet that you're about to do if you're still planning on doing it. And if you don't have these things, how can you incorporate these things so that you know you can be successful in your upcoming diet? Uh, and if you need help, if you need a source of professional accountability, or if you want to just talk through your strategy generally um, with no commitment, no strings attached, feel free to schedule a free strategy call with me. Again, I'm more than happy to help you out. My goal is to just help you succeed. That's why I'm on this platform. That's why I'm giving out free content so that you guys have the tools you need to be successful. So um, feel free to schedule a free strategy call. The link is in the show notes for you uh, and we can talk through anything you want. Um, and if you feel like you want professional accountability, um, you can follow through and get working with me as well. But those are, again, the three things that I think make a successful diet. Flexibility, some degree of flexibility, planning slash education, and accountability. Without those three things, you're just another statistic. And I don't want that for you. You don't want that for you. So make sure you have those things in place ahead of time. Thank you guys for listening to the show. If you found this helpful or valuable, please rate the podcast five stars on whatever podcast platform you're listening to. And we will see you guys on the next episode.